you know what, guys? <laughs> I think it's time for Swirly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Baby, don't forsake me. Hey, what are you doing? Unhand me! Hey, put me down! start off my video by saying congratulations to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers you whooped our ass fair and square no excuses over here shout out to Mr. Bucks Nation he's probably the best video maker when it comes to Tampa Bay Buccaneers he's a fair honest guy he reviews our team very well um, he's very respectful and I appreciate the work he does so shout out to that guy and the Buccaneers Nation they beat us, man. Ain't, ain't nothing else to say about that. We we didn't play well at all. And this team has been the ultimate Jekyll and Hyde team in the entire NFL. Probably the most I've ever seen us play like this. So before I get into all that, what up, Falcons Nation? Rise up, Nation. It's your boy, Jazzy Jeff. Real talk, no gimmicks. Bring that real Falcons talk to real Falcons fans. And what I mean by Jekyll and Hyde is that I've never seen a Falcons team where one week we look like world beaters. The next week we look like a JV team. One week we look like our defense is elite. The next week it looks like our defensive players should all be traded or cut. One week our offense is explosive and solid and Matt Ryan is not getting touched. One week... We can't block to save Matt Ryan's life. One week, the run game is going and looking sharp. The next week, we can't even average two yards a carry. One week, we're getting sacks, pressures, picks. The next week, we can't get any type of pressure at all when we get gashed the entire game. One week... Our kicker is making field goals and everything's going great. Another week, we're missing field goals left and right. I I, I just I just don't understand. So I, I just want to take a deep breath before I get into this. Some of the most frustrating things on our team, one of them is the defense. And I'll start with the players that frustrate me so much. Vic Beasley is the most confusing defensive player I've ever reviewed, looked at, watched his tape. Anything you call it, he is literally an enigma. One week, Vic Beasley looks like a Pro Bowl caliber uh, player. The next week, he completely disappears from games. I'm talking about uh, this past Sunday, he only had one tackle the entire game. Besides that, he was a non-factor. Desmond Trufant. One week, he's getting one, two picks. He's locking people down. They ain't getting no yards. The next week, he's getting burnt by chicken. Back of wide receivers are torching him. Um, he can't cover anybody in man. He's running the wrong, the wrong defensive plays. He's avoiding his zones. He's mis messing up his responsibilities. Who else? Devontae Campbell. One week he looks like he should have been traded with Duke Riley and can't do nothing. Another week he, he's making tackles and he's making interceptions and he's making plays. Deion Jones, who I love with all my heart. One week this man it looks like the best middle linebacker in the NFL. Another week he's getting run over by defenders left and right. Grady Jarrett who is the most reliable defensive player on our team. 
most of the time he is a steady anchor, a disruptor, etc. This past Sunday, he was a non-factor. I understand he gets a double team, and I understand other guys got to help out, but he did not have a great game himself. Tack McKinley. Sometimes he plays so great. He puts so much pressure on the quarterbacks. He's getting sacks. He's running people down. He plays the effort, relentless motor. And then other games, he's uh, crashing in too far, and he's letting guys run around him, and he's getting penalties, and he's getting he's getting blocked, and he's falling on the ground, he's getting injured, and he does not look like the same person. Um, on offense, Calvin Ridley, one week he's so explosive, you can't be stopped, three, four touchdowns. And then other weeks, he drops everything. He runs the wrong routes. He gets nicked up and injured every five seconds. The, the, the inconsistencies on this team is, is the, the killer of our team this whole season. And that, to me, starts with the head coach. The fish rots from the head down. Dan Quinn has been Jekyll and Hyde this whole season, and it has trickled down to the players. The first seven, eight weeks, Dan Quinn's trying to coach the defense by himself. He's running horrible plays. He loses all his challenges. It looks like he his time management is poor. Just things that don't make any sense. He's super conservative. And then next couple weeks, he's going for it on fourth down every play. He's uh, receiving the ball every single time now on coin tosses. Um, he's extra aggressive. He, re he, he relinquishes the play calling to and the defense all of a sudden comes alive. And then Sunday, I don't know what happened. I, I hope to God they didn't give Dan Quinn back the playing call and duties because that's what it looked like to me. I saw the same bad shell zone defenses that I saw from weeks one through uh, eight. I, I saw zero creativity that I saw in the Saints and Panthers game. Zero. I didn't see any of the plays that I highlighted in my other videos on my channel in this game. We were running vanilla defenses and we were getting steamrolled by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't understand how we can shut down lethal threats like Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, and then let Ronald Jones run all over us like he's some Hall of Fame running back. We bottle up Drew Brees and Kyle Allen and then let Jameis Winston, the, the, the biggest turnover machine, just throw all over us. We got zero sacks on Jameis Winston. Yes, he threw a couple picks, but other than that, he was torching us. Remember I told you in the preview about Chris Godwin. He's the real threat on the team. It's not Mike Evans anymore. They already passed the torch. It's just Mike Evans in name and position alone. Chris Godwin was the real threat on the team. And he consistently was beating our defenders. But before that, he was winning off the line anyways because of the plays we were running. That soft-ass shell zone defense I can't stand. It is so basic. All Jameis Winston has to do is wait for the, the receiver to run past the middle linebacker. And he has to just drop it in between the linebacker and the safety. Because we're running outside zones, no corners are guarding these players. But for some reason, every time we went to a man coverage, our two interceptions were man coverage. Uh, Trufant's interception was man coverage. I don't know who was calling the place yesterday and what happened to the communication, the creativity, the scheming. What happened to that in, in, in a week 10 and 11 with the Saints and Panthers? That was non-existent in this game. It was just guys running through free zones the entire game. And I know you're going to say, oh, it was the pass rush. No, even, even on the pass rush, I saw us rushing four. I saw us blitzing. I barely saw any three-man rushes. So like I said, Jameis Winston had all day to find people. And it was embarrassing the way we got ran on. That, that run defense was non-existent. The offensive side of the ball. Yes, I know Chris Lynchum is out. But for the most part, 
We've been doing solid in protecting Matt Ryan. Yesterday, we were getting destroyed. Now, I warned y'all about Shaq Barrett. I, didn't I say, if this turns into a Shaq Barrett game, he can disrupt the game? Guess what? He disrupted the game. Matt Ryan was under siege the entire game. Brian Hill, 1.6 yards a carry rushing. Pitiful. Pathetic. I don't know what happened. Quadri Olsen was the, was the best running back on our team, um, but he only still averaged like 2.63 yards a carry. I mean, he did his best. Some of the run plays they were calling were absolutely atrocious for his skill set, his size, his running ability. Why are we running outside zone stretches to Quadri Olsen? And you're going to say, oh, Jazzy Jeff, that's, that's the run formation that we, that we play with. We're a run zone scheming team. But we have tons of power inside running plays with the zone run scheme. Why weren't we using those with Quadri Olsen? We were trying to use those with Brian Hill, which makes zero sense. Running Brian Hill on short yardage is like running into a brick wall three times in a row and thinking that's going to work. Guess what, they, guess what happened when they did with Quadri? He scored a touchdown. He got first downs. He moved a pile. But no, I saw a couple plays where they ran him an outside zone stretch, and that's not going to work on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially with a guy like Shaq Beard on the edge. That's not going to work with Quadri Olsen and his size and running people over. He's not a speed to the edge back. So you're supposed to tailor the game to the player's abilities, not the other way around. And the Falcons seem incapable of adjusting to situations. They're doubling Julio. Why can't we find anybody else? Why are we still throwing to Luke Stocker, who's clearly not a receiving tight end? I'm sorry, but Dan Quinn said this in, um, not Dan Quinn, Lieutenant Dan said this in his live stream on, on one of his shows that Dirk Cutter runs the most vanilla offenses like ever. Yes, he, he's an okay offensive coordinator, but he is so fucking vanilla that it's so easy to tell when it's a run, when it's not. When it's a screen, when it's not. We need a brand new offensive young mind. And I'm not talking about straight out of college. I don't want that experience again. But I don't want that old veteran recycled coach either. I don't I don't want a malarkey. I don't want a Kubi. I don't want any of these older recycled coordinators or coaches. I want a younger, fresh NFL mind in our system who can change things, make our team more dynamic, better scheming, better creativity, better disguising what we're doing. And we're just not getting it out of dirt cutter. Who 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 else has been inconsistent? DeMonte Casey in the secondary, he, he he is struggling at free safety. They they moved uh, Ricardo Allen somewhat to, to strong safety to make up for losing uh, Keanu Neal. But Casey is missing assignments. He's missing tackles. He's supposed to be the the he's supposed to be the the safety blanket on the defense. On that Chris Godwin touchdown, Casey came in and made the weakest attempt at a tackle or a pass deflection or defense I've ever seen and let Chris Godwin score. There was multiple times, multiple touchdowns. It was Casey's fault back there. I don't I don't know what it is, but I'm sorry. Ricardo Allen is a better free safety than, than uh, Casey is. He's more instinctive. He's a better ball hawk. He's smarter. He reads coverages better, and he has less miscommunication mistakes. So... That's another thing I want to see change. I know we have to make a decision because Keanu Neal is coming back next year. But moving forward in the year, um, like for next year, we got to find a way to utilize DeMonte Casey in a better position that's more suitable to him because he's struggling right now at free safety. Which leads me to my next point, and that is next year in the future of this team. I, I tru this this season is so conflicting for me because I truly do not believe in tanking. I believe you play to win the game. I, I'm I'm just like Herm Edwards. I believe that you play to win the game. You should never just go out there and tank because when teams try to tank on purpose, they end up getting hurt in football. It's not like basketball where you can just take plays off, not care, be the 76ers and tank and rebuild your team. 
Football is a dangerous sport. If you're not moving at 100, 100 miles an hour, you're going to get hurt standing around or tanking or not trying. So I don't believe in tanking. But at the same time, winning these games are meaningless. The best we can do now is 8-8. Eight and eight. That's middle of the road. We're not going to make the playoffs. We're not going to make the wild card. None of that. The, the best we can do is 8-8. Eight and eight. And we still have the Saints on Thanksgiving. We still have other teams we need to put. We still have the 49ers we got to play. So it, it, it's, it's so conflicting. It's like, what is our objective the rest of the season? We're stuck in that hard place where you don't want to tank, but you don't want to win enough games where you're just going to get an average middle-of-the-road pick. So, so this is so difficult to watch because I hate watching my team lose. I want to see us win. But at the same time, what is our objective now winning? It's like if we win, it's like, okay, we're still not going to the playoffs, and we just now got a worse pick and a worse pick. But if we lose, 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 it's like I, I can't stand watching that. It, it almost ruins my entire day. So I can't stand being in this position, and, and it's like I almost just want the season to be over because I can't stand watching this every, 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 uh, every week. I'm still going to watch it regardless. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to make these videos, but – it's like you're stuck in a rock, a rock in a hard place. And the Jekyll and Hyde has to stop. That comes from the head coach. And Dan Quinn should not keep his job after two wins versus the Saints and Panthers. He should not. Falling to the Bucks at home is atrocious. It's unacceptable. They were also a 3-7 and team. There is no excuse for that. So, Falcons Nation, you tell me, do you believe in tanking or do you believe in winning these games even though they're completely meaningless games? Do you believe in playing for the picks or do you believe in playing for the honor and just, and just rolling the dice in the draft with whatever pick you have? Who do you think has been the most inconsistent player on this Falcons team the entire season? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you still believe in Dan Quinn? Or should he be fired and bring in someone different? Or do you think we should keep Dan Quinn and just change the offensive coordinator? Do you think we should just keep Dan Quinn and promote guys like Jeff Albrick and Raheem Morris? Or should we still go out and get someone else? Should we can Dirk Cutter and get someone else? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Hit that subscribe button for future comment, like, share, and comment. And as always, Falcons Nation, we rise up. Have a good week, y'all. Happy Thanksgiving. Peace.